second anniversary of the grand jury's decision in the Garner case not to bring an indictment against any. Two years have passed since our justice system here in New York City, New York State, told Eric Garner's family that there will be no accountability for what happened to your son, your brother, your father. You know, we had a sick feeling in Arizona that this grand jury in Staten Island was going to look at the evidence presented to it in the way that it was presented and come back with no indictment. So we asked ourselves what could we do at the city council level to try to contribute to at least this never happening again, to do something that finally sinks into the minds of police officers. The understanding that if they perform a prohibited trouble, there will be consequences. The result was this legislation, which bans the use of chokehold for the course of attempting to affect an arrest. The bill currently has 28 sponsors of the city council, a majority. But unfortunately, this mayor wrote into the office on claims of being a, a police reformer and uh, an advocate for criminal justice reform, has consistently and repeatedly threatened to veto this legislation. I want to say that again. This mayor, who ran as a champion of police reform, has consistently threatened to veto this legislation making the use of chokehold. And I would point out that all this legislation does is take what had existed in NYPD policy as an internal ban and make it the law of the land. In fact, unfortunately, this past spring, the police department actually came out with use of force guidelines that expand the justifications that are available to police officers to use chokeholds. Actually liberalizing <coughs> the ability of officers to use a chokehold. So the mayor's response to the death of Eric Garner has not been to make chokeholds more difficult, less likely to occur, but it's actually to make the use of chokeholds easier to justify and therefore more likely to continue. To car, the dignified mother of Eric Garner and a mother indeed of the movement. We do not have any transparency. And it's been two years tomorrow that there was no indictment, no justice, no accountability. So now we need to change it. We're here today to speak about the chokehold. And we don't need policy, we have policy. We need legislation. So we have to stop playing with the policy because that's right, all right. that they do. It's only on the, 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 the books and that's it. Nothing happens when policy is violated. There is no punishment. In fact, sometimes it seems like it's an award, a, a reward when they violate policy. So now we got to step up and stand up. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So let's do what we have to do to get this bill. We have to get it in and then get it passed. Okay? And I thank all of you for being here. And I hope everybody, when you leave here, you don't just go to your homes and say nothing about it. Go to your homes and speak about it. Talk about it. Let everybody know that this is an important issue and we're trying to get it passed. And I thank you all so much. We have seen in the past the use of a chokehold, not just as a defensive measure, but as an offensive and aggressive measure. That is unacceptable in 2016, two years after the killing of Eric Garner. The city of New York needs to be leading the nation as it regards, as it relates to the use of force practices by police departments. But instead, we seem to be falling behind. We seem to be falling behind the national curve as it relates to accountability in police. We the people, is that not what it's about? We the people.